Greetings from Grey Guns. This is episode nine in our long running series on P320 uncommanded discharge theories. In this episode, we're going to take a crack at the thousand slices of Swiss cheese effect, which if you've been following this at all, is an argument you've heard that attempts to discredit the P320 by claiming that the circumstances that allowed this pistol to fire in an uncommanded way, a mechanical AD of some sort, uh, can be so tenuous or so difficult to recreate because of the complexity of the firearm and all the various different circumstances that could obtain that it's actually then impossible to recreate, which explains why we don't have anybody that's ever been able to present an actual demonstrable scenario by which one of these things will actually fire without a trigger pull. That said, there's an awful lot of people that have been proposing that theory, and I think in all honesty, quite a bit of it is a deliberate attempt to gaslight people that own this pistol uh, and or to discredit the company and the people that support it. I hate to say that because that doesn't sound very unbiased of me, but I think it's factual because in reality, that thousand slices of Swiss cheese effect, which is a little bit more than a trope in engineering, it's actually an accepted concept within engineering, is not one that's actually particularly applicable to this pistol. And this video, I'm going to attempt to show you why, but we're also going to give you a pretty good look at what we did to throw the kitchen sink at this problem and essentially introduce into one pistol through a whole series of tests every fault that actually makes mechanical possible sense that anybody has ever proposed or advanced. So with that said, let's get started. It's going to be kind of a long video, so please bear with me. A 737 has half a million parts. You'd think they could interact in an incalculable number of ways, but in reality, engineers figure out ways to layer and overlap their systems so that any potential failure is mitigated or isolated. Compare that to maybe 20 parts in your P320 that actually matter in terms of function and safety. And the physics and mechanics governing their interactions are completely understood. We can reproduce them. We know what they are. Certainly there's some nuance. The FBI, for instance, took a couple shots at it before their engineers were able to determine that a P320 in fact won't fire without a trigger pull. You contrast a P320 with, say, a Colt Python. That design has been manufactured for 123 years. It's only got about nine parts that matter, but they have to be absolutely meticulously fitted to function. And that is all child's play compared to, say, a Sakosha MX shutter on a classic Japanese rangefinder. Come by and I'll show you how to work on them. I recognize, however, that a lot of folks are more interested in shooting their pistols than worrying about what's inside them. And for folks who aren't particularly technical and who don't care, the thousand slices of Swiss cheese effect sounds like it makes a lot of common sense. However, like anything that doesn't involve magical thinking, these assertions can be put to the test. And that's what we're doing with our next little exercise here. We took our primary test pistol and built into it every defect and condition of potential failure that we have tested up till now, along with a few we hadn't gotten to yet. For example, we opened up the clearance between the FCU and the slide to the point that it just rattles around like crazy, far in excess of anything that you could ever find in the wild. Of course, you've seen the striker lock before. We installed the striker lock spring upside down and then crapped it up with more of our secret proprietary four sweeping siloxide and filings mix. We went back to Isaac Lockwood's seriously worn out sear and the chiseled foot on the striker along with an off-center sear housing pin and the seriously mangled trigger bar spring a 576 early style trigger bar with advanced timing filled the fcu of course with more crap and went with the cross sear springs just for drill Threw all that onto the booster riser, took it up pretty good, and then did a series of tests five feet on concrete. And more. And more tests beyond that. An entire full run of them. When we were done, man, this pistol really looked like hell. I frankly have lost count now of how many times it's been dropped probably 260 or so at this point. Then I pulled out the sear springs and I pulled out the disconnector so that the only thing supporting the sear against force from the striker is the sear safety cam feature that we patented and made available to SIG for the voluntary upgrade. 
We threw that sucker into the vibrating tumbler for two hours and nothing. This is the same case we've used throughout the entire experience. Ironically, the case outlasted multiple grip modules, an FCU, a couple of slides, and a bunch of other stuff. But bear in mind again that all of this greatly exceeds anything we've found in subject pistols we've examined or that have ever been reported in plaintiff's affidavits and law enforcement reports. B320s do not go off without a trigger pull.